I got to say, I was surprised to see so many socialists in the Republican caucus. <laughs> When it comes to the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that President Biden signed into law, I've been pretty open on this channel about my criticism of that legislation. It's bipartisan infrastructure, so I don't like it because it is essentially a corporate giveaway. That's not to say that there aren't good provisions within that legislation, but anytime you get to a bipartisan consensus, most of the time, it's going to be because the donors within both parties are instructing their little puppets to support that. So that's why you saw a lot of Republicans support the bipartisan infrastructure deal, which was influenced by individuals like Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin, who are exclusively corporate tools. Now, there are a lot of Republicans who also didn't like this bill, albeit for very different reasons uh, than me. How I wouldn't criticize this bill is uh, I wouldn't call it socialism because it's the opposite of socialism, but a lot of Republicans denounced this as socialism. But yet, even after denouncing this bill as socialism, what are they doing? Well, of course, they are writing to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and asking him for funding from this bill that they voted against and also called socialism. And Biden is actually calling them out for their hypocrisy. But before we get to that video, I want to share CNN's report on this. They write, last November, GOP Representative Tom Emmer of Minnesota released a statement slamming the passage of the freshly approved infrastructure law he referred to as President Biden's multi-trillion dollar socialist wish list. Then, in June, Emmer, the House Republican campaign chairman leading attacks on Democrats for supporting the law, quietly submitted a wish of his own. Arizona Representative Paul Gozar, a leading Biden critic who explained his vote against what he called a phony infrastructure bill by issuing a statement that, quote, this bill only serves to advance the America last socialist agenda while completely lacking fiscal responsibility, wrote three separate letters between March and July advocating for projects in his district. They'd enhance quality of life, Gozar wrote. They'd ease congestion and boost the economy. They'd alleviate bottlenecks and improve rural living conditions. Kentucky Representative Andy Barr called the bill a big government socialist agenda. He later wrote three letters of his own on behalf of three different projects, also citing their importance for safety and job growth. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul said he voted against the bill because it typified wasteful spending, which would deepen the national debt. Paul wrote 10 different letters petitioning for more of that money coming into Kentucky. Now, listen, if they're going to criticize this bill, I don't have a problem with that. It's the way that they criticize this bill that especially makes them hypocrites. They called it socialism. It proves, one, that they don't know what socialism even is. But two, it proves that they don't mind socialism if it benefits them. That's the takeaway here. They're hypocrites. But this isn't socialism in this instance. There are instances where you can point to conservatives reaping the rewards of big governments after denouncing big government. I think that PPP loans is a fantastic example. Individuals like Mark Wayne Mullen, Matt Gates, they took PPP loans, Marjorie Taylor Greene as well, and these are the individuals who claim that government shouldn't be big unless it's you know big enough to fit inside of your bedroom or your uterus. But at the same time, they take handouts from the government, but yet they want to restrict welfare programs. They denounce Joe Biden for canceling student debt, but yet they had their PPP loans forgiven. So they are hypocrites of the highest order, and Democrats cannot keep letting them get away with this. Their hypocrisy needs to be called out. They need to be put on blast. And thankfully, Joe Biden decided to activate Dark Brandon, and he cited this exact report, and he put some of these Republicans by name on blast. And this is the exact strategy that Democrats should be incorporating ahead of November. Let's watch. I saw there's a report. You guys can, as they say, as my grandkids say, Google it. But the report that came out on CNN, it says, Republicans call Biden infrastructure program socialism. And then they ask for the money. And it goes through all the Republicans, who, the most conservative Republicans, who call it socialism and how they're asking for it. A guy named Paul Gosser, he's written three separate letters to the administration asking for projects in his district. He says it enhanced the quality of life, that ease congestion, boost the economy. Voted against it says it's all socialism. Go down the list. Kentucky Representative Andy Barr, the biggest socialist agenda. Three different projects he wants. 
studying the importance of safety and growth of his district. Rand Paul, I go down the list, look it up. Socialism. I didn't know there were that many socialist Republicans. Think about it. I'm, I'm serious. Let's get serious about taking care of ordinary people, regular people like I grew up. Folks, look, you can't make this stuff up. You got to say, and I got to say, I was surprised to see so many socialists in the Republican caucus. <laughs> that right there was good politics. For so long, Democrats have been letting Republicans get away with overt hypocrisy, and they have to put a stop to that right now. I'm glad that they are seemingly moving past this era of when they go low, we go high, with the exception of progressives because they're ruthless against progressives. But I'm glad that they're moving past this era because they have let Republicans set the agenda, set the narrative for years now. And I understand why they basically do that. It's essentially a losing battle because the Republican propaganda apparatus is incredibly loud and powerful. So what's the point of even trying to push back? Well, when you push back, actually, when you use your bully pulpit as president, that's very influential. And because Biden made that remark, he called out these socialist Republicans, facetiously so. Now media are reporting on Biden's remarks as president. And now they look very foolish. And some of these Republicans are in tight races. So to let their Democratic opponent use this attack, showcase their hypocrisy, it's brilliant. Now, there's a complete list that I'll link to within that CNN article. But I just want to real quick go over some of these names here. So when it comes to the Senate, individuals who condemned it as socialist who also wrote letters to Pete Buttigieg begging for money from daddy government. Uh, that includes Mike Rounds, John Thune, Joni Ernst, Cindy Hyde-Smith, Richard Shelby, Pat Toomey, Jim Inhofe. All of these senators claimed that this was bad, voted against it, and now they are trying to get this money so they can then brag to their constituents about money that they secured for them when they had no part in securing that funding. It's hilarious. Also in the House of Representatives, Marionette Miller-Meeks, Vicki Hartzler, Larry Buxton, Jerry Carl, Jim Comer, John Rutherford, Mark Modi, John Joyce, uh, Nancy Mace, Kathy McMorris, Rogers, Michelle Fishback, uh, Trent Kelly, Randy Feenstra. Most of these people you probably don't know, but let me just get through the list here. Tom McClintock, Debbie Lesko, Julia Letlow, and Darren LaHood. All of these Republicans condemned the infrastructure bill, implied or explicitly said it was socialism, and then asked for money from it. Perhaps in some instances for multiple projects that they wanted money for. So look, this is the strategy. This should be the go-to strategy for Democrats going forward. Stop letting Republicans get away with their overt hypocrisy. When you juxtapose their statement with a contradictory statement and you put that in an ad, when you broadcast that, that is persuasive to Americans because many Americans are fed up with the hypocrisy and the lies of politicians. So by showcasing how the Republican Party lacks consistency and they have no, no and they have no core ideological beliefs and they'll say one thing and do another when it's, you know, going to give them a political reward, I think that's really important. So for Biden to broadcast their hypocrisy, this is a winning message. Keep it up, but put them on blast for every single issue whenever they give you this opportunity to uh, do it. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralism, woke moralism, woke moralism. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital way. region was exposed. I let her have her way.